Ashkenazi Jews, and to a lesser extent, Sephardic Jews, often face accusations of not actually having any ancient Israelite ancestry. There are a few notable theories floating around that claim to explain their origin instead. One theory suggests that Ashkenazi Jews aren't descended from the ancient Middle East at all, but instead come from a medieval kingdom called Khazaria that converted to Judaism. Another claims they're simply European converts to Judaism with no Middle Eastern heritage. We've looked at all the available DNA studies on ancient Israelites, medieval Ashkenazi Jews, modern Ashkenazi Jews, and even Khazar DNA remains. What we found tells a compelling story that isn't commonly known. First, let's get our terms straight, since not everyone watching might be familiar with these distinctions. When we say Ashkenazi Jews, we're talking about Jewish communities that developed in Central and Eastern Europe, places like Germany, Poland, Russia, and Lithuania. Sephardic Jews refers to Jewish communities that developed around the Mediterranean, originally Spain and Portugal. Due to the Inquisition, these communities then moved to the Ottoman Empire, mainly to North Africa and Anatolia. Many Sephardic Jews also settled in Latin America and became ancestors of modern Latinos. Now that we know which groups we're discussing, let's first evaluate the Khazar theory. The Khazars were a Turkic people who established a powerful kingdom between the Black and Caspian Seas, centered around the Caucasus with access to important rivers like the Volga. They bordered Christian states like Kievan Rus and the Byzantine Empire to the north and west, and the Islamic Abbasid Caliphate to the south. This location was perfect for trade. The Khazars wanted to maximize their wealth and minimize armed conflicts, so they decided to adopt Judaism as their state religion, which would make them neutral to the states they bordered, as the Byzantines and the Rus were Christians, and the Abbasids were Muslim. Since Judaism was the first Abrahamic religion, the Khazar elite figured that this move would also give them additional respect from their neighbors. Here's the problem, though. First, the Khazars weren't the majority of people in their own state. They were simply the ruling elite and the nomadic Turkic tribes loyal to that elite. Only the elites converted to Judaism, while common Turkic nomads likely remained Tengriist, and the native non-Turkic peoples mainly kept practicing their original religions. Another problem is chronology. When the Khazars adopted Judaism as their state religion, Jewish communities were already present in Europe. Finally, when we analyze the DNA of likely Khazar remains, we mainly see two genetic profiles. One belongs to native North Caucasus individuals similar to modern Chechens, Ossetians, and Dagestanis. The other genetic profile is common to Central Asian Turks, a mix between East Eurasian and West Eurasian clusters, with East Eurasian being slightly more dominant. One of the remains, when analyzed, had Kazakhs as the closest modern ethnicity genetically. We're showing Kazakh people on screen right now, and surely you don't think they resemble Ashkenazi Jews in any way. The paternal lineages of these samples also don't align with either modern Ashkenazi Jews or medieval Ashkenazi Jews. Now, Ashkenazi Jews do show minor East Eurasian admixture in the 1-3% to range, but it's extremely minor and the source isn't confirmed to be Khazar. Due to Silk Road trade and other factors, it could be from any other Turkic tribe or population with East Eurasian admixture. When looking strictly at the paternal lineages of Ashkenazi Jews, there is a presence of haplogroup Q at about 5% with subclades that do indeed point to the East. The problem is that these specific subclades could have arrived in Europe prior with Scythians, Huns, and Avars. Therefore, they're not necessarily Khazar lineages. However, even if those paternal lineages did come from the Khazars, 5% of paternal lineages and 1-3% to of overall autosomal genetic admixture is extremely minor, and describing them entirely as Khazars based on these low of percentages would be extremely dishonest and foolish. African Americans, for example, average 4-5 to five as much of European ancestry, as their levels of European ancestry is estimated to be between 20 and 25 percent. Yet no one would claim that African Americans are actually Europeans. So what is the actual genetic makeup of European Jewish DNA? In 2022, researchers published groundbreaking results from medieval Ashkenazi Jewish remains found in Erfurt, Germany, dating back to the 14th century. This is huge because it gives us a direct window into the genetics of early Ashkenazi communities. The Erfurt study analyzed DNA from 33 medieval Ashkenazi individuals who died around 1349, probably during Black Death pogroms. 
These are some of the oldest Ashkenazi Jewish remains ever genetically analyzed. What did researchers find? First, they discovered that these remains from Erfurt could be split into two distinct clusters. The first cluster is essentially entirely Sephardic Jewish in DNA, with only 3% German admixture. The second cluster can be described as two-thirds of the first cluster plus one-third additional Eastern European admixture. When the results of both clusters are averaged out, the ancestry of these medieval Ashkenazi Jews can be explained using two different models. In the first model, using North Italian, Mediterranean, and Eastern European as source populations. These medieval Jews were 43% Mediterranean, 37% North Italian, and 20% Eastern European. In the second model, using South Italian, Middle Eastern, and Eastern European as sources, the results were 65% South Italian, 19% Middle Eastern, and 16% Eastern European. Even more importantly, when compared to modern Ashkenazi Jews, the medieval samples showed very similar genetic profiles. This means the basic genetic structure of Ashkenazi populations was already established by the Middle Ages and has remained remarkably stable. Since modern Ashkenazi Jews are extremely similar to the average of these two clusters, we can deduce that these two populations mixed among themselves over time to create modern Ashkenazi Jews. By looking at the Ashkenazi Jewish paternal Y DNA lineages, we immediately see that haplogroups with Near Eastern origins such as J1, J2, and E1B1B immediately take up to 60% of the entire genome. However, these could be lineages already present in Europe by the time the ancestors of Ashkenazi Jews arrived. We would need to have specific subclades which are unfortunately not available currently, but even by looking at this data we can deduce that the Levantine ancestry mainly came from the paternal side, while the European admixtures mostly entered maternally. If we are to postulate that the source of Q and East Eurasian ancestry in Ashkenazi Jews is indeed Khazar, then due to both autosomal and the paternal roughly being the same, it means that the Khazar admixtures entered both paternally and maternally. Though once again, even with this assumption, their share is extremely small at 5%. So is there any European admixture in European Jews? And so where is it from? Now, Ashkenazi Jews do have European ancestry. Nobody denies that. But here's what's fascinating. It's not the European ancestry you'd expect if either myth were true. If Ashkenazi Jews were primarily Central Eastern European converts, you'd expect to see heavy Germanic, Slavic, or Baltic genetic signatures. If they descended from Khazars, you'd expect Central Asian or Turkic markers. Instead, what do we find? The European component is primarily Southern European, most similar to South Italians. This makes perfect historical sense, because Jewish communities existed throughout the Roman Empire and around the Mediterranean long before they migrated north into Germany and Eastern Europe. What's also fascinating is that it's difficult to find the exact percentage of Levantine ancestry in Ashkenazi Jews because the Roman populations that the original Levantine Israelites mixed with already had pre-existing Levantine admixture themselves. Essentially, Ashkenazi Jews came from a founder population that was mostly South European with heavy Levantine admixture. This is also why, genetically, Ashkenazi Jews are closest to Sicilians and the Maltese, as these populations also have a South European genetic foundation, along with notable Semitic admixture. Though in the case of Sicilians and Maltese, it's more Arabic and North African admixture rather than Israelite. Now, let's look at the genetic profile of Sephardic Jews and how their ancestry further supports what we see in Ashkenazi Jews. Sephardic Jews often don't receive as many accusations of lacking Semitic ancestry as Ashkenazi Jews do, and here's why that might be. As mentioned earlier, Sephardic Jews were based in Iberia, but then migrated to Ottoman Empire lands like Morocco, Algeria, and Turkey because of the Inquisition. Many people wrongly conflate them with Mizrahi Jews, the Jews who never went to Europe in the first place, and instead settled in places like Egypt, Iraq, Iran, Yemen, the Caucasus, and Central Asia. However, that's not accurate. Sephardic Jews, based on their ancestral profile, stem from the same founding population of Southern Europeans and Levantines as Ashkenazi Jews did. Their major difference is that instead of additional Eastern European admixture, they received Iberian and North African admixture instead. This makes sense given where they lived, coupled with the minor North African gene flow into Iberia during the time of Al-Andalus. Their similarity to Ashkenazi Jews destroys both myths at once. If either myth were true, if Ashkenazi Jews were primarily European converts or Hazar descendants, you'd expect them to look completely different genetically from Sephardic Jews. 
but they don't. Both populations share that same notable South European and Levantine genetic foundation. So if the science is this clear and we've got medieval DNA to back it up, why do these myths persist? Several reasons. First, they seem to explain something puzzling. How did Jewish communities end up scattered across Europe? The real answer is gradual migration and some local conversion, but that's less exciting than mass conversion theories. Second, there's historical precedent for conversion. It did happen in small numbers throughout history, and the Hazar elite probably did convert to Judaism. But isolated examples don't explain the ancestry of most Ashkenazi Jews. Unfortunately, these theories also persist because some people use them for political purposes. If you can claim Jews aren't really from the Middle East, you can make certain arguments about modern politics. But science doesn't care about politics. It just shows us what the genes say. So no, neither Ashkenazi or Sephardic Jews fit into the simplistic worldview present in these theories. They're not mainly Khazar converts, nor are they mostly local European converts. However, they're also far from being fully Levantine genetically. Instead, they logically reflect their history in Europe, where their heavy South European admixture points to their European origin being in the Roman Empire, with minor additional Iberian, North African, and Eastern European admixtures reflecting the lands they later settled after leaving the Italian peninsula. The science is clear, and the medieval DNA confirms it. Both conspiracy theories about Jewish ancestry are simply wrong.